Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another top five guns video for you and we're gonna be talking about top tens. All right, guys, 10 millimeters making a bit of a comeback. 10 millimeters, the comeback kid, y'all. All right, lots of power. You get 41 Magnum power basically uh, in a semi-auto platform, which is a lot of fun. So we're gonna show you some handguns and a revolver here uh, that fire 10 millimeter. Lots of companies now are bringing 10 millimeter back in a big way. Really awesome stuff we're going to look at. Uh, guys, if you love these videos, consider purchasing a shirt over on our website. I'm going to hit you with some Billy Mays real quick. Um, you know, these shirts are great. If you guys uh, love them, check them out. Uh, our buddy Matt makes them. We've got a ton of different shirts on the site. If you love the videos and you'd like to support us, consider purchasing a shirt to help support our efforts. All right. So number one, I, I think that th these usually are in no particular order, but I'm going to say the first one on the batch has to be the Glock. Well, that's why it's on your end, because, you know, 10 millimeters is the OG. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So this is a 40 MOS. This is a Gen 4. It's got the uh, basically slide rider cut, uh, long slide, long barrel, lots of sight radius, mm -hmm. great pistol. And, you know, Glock is sort of, you know, with the Model 20 uh, mm -hmm. was the first, uh, you know, original 10 millimeter Glock. Um, they are a proven platform for the 10 millimeter as a cartridge. I mean, they're powerful. They hold a respectable amount of, uh, of ammo in the magazine. So you get 16 shots with uh, one in the chamber, which is awesome. They're very accurate. They're reliable. You can shoot any type of 10 millimeter ammunition through them that you can possibly find anywhere. It doesn't matter how, what the pressure is. It'll handle, <gasps> handle any pressure oh, you want. But my unsupported chamber. Oh no! Oh, these guns are robust and they <laughs> hold up great. I and the shot, longer barrel gives you some nice, you know, velocity. I have not shot one of the um, one of the forties, the long slides, but the twenty is an awesome, awesome gun. I mean, if you guys like the the twenty one, the forty five ACP, the ten mil is really not much more to handle, but you get so much more power. I mean, we're talking, you know, seven hundred foot pounds on average in your hand. That's a lot of energy out of a handgun. I agree. It's non magnum. I, mean. I agree. I mean, and, you know, obviously certain revolvers can get into a lot more power. Obviously, when you start getting the 44 Magnum and start getting up in like 454 Casul mm -hmm. and getting up in the 500 Magnum, 460. Yeah, I mean, there are revolver cartridges that definitely trump the power mm -hmm. of 10 millimeter. But in an auto loader, 10 millimeter is pretty dang, for a production gun and for production cartridges mm -hmm. that are commonly available, 10 millimeter is a great tool for hunting, personal defense and anything you want just I've great. heard of um, I've heard a lot of guides and stuff kind of carrying the 10 mils over like a 44 mag and stuff because you get much more capacity with nearly as powerful of a cartridge you know when you're in back country bear country that sort of thing I mean 10 millimeter is no joke for you're sure. getting into into 41 magnum absolutely uh, power you know for bullet bullet weight to bullet weight you're definitely mm -hmm. getting into 41 magnum territory which is pretty cool and some of the core bond loadings and some of the crazier stuff from Underwood and Lehigh can definitely get mm -hmm. you into some <laughs> nuclear <laughs> territory Buffalo boar has a hard cast load that will blow your socks off and anything you shoot <laughs> 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 All right, so um, 1911s are also making a huge comeback in 10 millimeter. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. So this is one of the Ruger SR 1911s in 10, and this was, actually, I think this was new uh, earlier in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, I think. Yeah. But this is just a standard, you know, five-inch barrel, you know, nothing special, but it's a 10 mic mic. That's so right. you do still get seven rounds capacity in the magazine, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can get standard like 10 shot mags, just like the regular extendos, the extended magazines. If you will. If you will. But, um, you know, a lot of the 1911s, they come in uh, long slide varieties as well, which give you a, a six inch barrel. So a little bit more velocity, a little bit more energy. And the thing that I found interesting about this particular gun is the lack of a bushing on the front. It just has the standard sort of like match grade bull barrel, a full size guide rod. So it seems like I haven't shot one of these SR-1911s, but I've nice. heard good things about them. Skeletonized trigger, fully adjustable, but I think that thing would shoot quite well. Well, and here's the thing too, is these also represent an excellent value oh, for absolutely. a 10 millimeter in a 1911. Remington makes their R1 in a longer slide mm -hmm. version. I think they call it the, the R1 Hunter or we something did, like yeah, that. Yeah, we showed that off uh, one day up here, I think. Yeah. So, you know, they have a 10 millimeter Remington. Mm -hmm. um, also, the I want to Delta elites. Yeah, the Colt Delta Elites are kind of the mm -hmm. original 10 millimeter 1911s on the block. And then you get into some of the Wilson Combat offerings, which are definitely higher end uh, 1911s and 10 millimeter. Um, 10 millimeter, 
I think as a cartridge originally was was really in a heck of a lot of 1911 platforms. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really one of the most the biggest throwbacks to the 10 millimeter is a 1911 platform. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> the funny thing about the 10 millimeter is that when it was developed, you know, it was kind of developed for, if I'm not mistaken, like the FBI. You know, they wanted something more powerful and everything like that, and uh, they got what they asked for. And then they said, oh, it's too powerful. Oh, no, we need something smaller. So then that's where the 40 uh, Smith & Wesson came from. And now it's just so funny that everyone is making this, you know, this venture back to the more powerful handgun cartridges like the 10 millimeter. I think and the 40 is kind of dying off. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it, 40 is kind of dying. It's For, crazy. 40 how is a dying go. cartridge, and 10 millimeter has gained a bit of resurgence. Yeah. And the thing about it too is, with all of the advancements that have been made in projectile technologies, mm -hmm. propellant technologies, um, you know, you're, they're able to really craft a carry load that can generate a lot of excellent energy. Uh, in these in these guns, I mean, you look at <coughs> nine millimeter making such a huge comeback as a cartridge that people are relying on for self defense mm -hmm. because you look at all the bullet designs and all the bullet technology, propellant technology mm -hmm. that really allows them to wring a lot of power out of the nine millimeter. Yep. Whereby many people for a long time used to view the nine millimeter as being really anemic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, when it's really not. The propellant technology, like Eric mentioned, is has been stellar in the past you know ten years at at best, I mean, yep. you know, higher velocities, lower pressures, cleaner barrels, less fouling. I mean, temperature insensitive, insensitive coatings. And low flash. That, I mean, yeah, low flash uh, coatings. All sorts of things are doing this powder. It just makes it so stellar for handgun use. But what do you want to talk move about down, next? Yeah, let's move down the line. Man, this is a sweet gun. It's a SIG P220 Elite. I have to admit, I didn't even know this gun existed until we found it here. Uh -uh. We're hanging out at Moss today, having some fun. Got Ray in the bunch here, and we're hanging out. Um, you notice the mod wall behind us. That's what Tactical Walls is doing now. Well, they have a, a wide variety of other things. If I can just hack this video for a minute, hack it. But this hack is away. this is a different background than you used to seeing at Moss, and this is their mod wall. And we'll get a few shots of that to show you what it looks like. But it's a really cool modular wall system that they've put up here at Moss just to make it look a little more professional. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Anyway. But. The 220 is a uh, SIG single stack variety. Uh, these are available in a number of different calibers, but uh, like Eric said, we just happened across this 10 millimeter up here. It's like, ooh! That trigger is great. Oh man, the trigger is awesome. And it's got a great cryptic finish. I mean, it just, the 220 has always been one of my favorite, you know, SIGs as far as just the grip, angle, the feel, everything else goes. It just feels really nice in the hand. You do lose some capacity. Yeah. I mean, it's more like a 1911 in capacity, but. Eight plus one. I mean, Adjustable sights, I mean, god dang, what a smooth and stellar looking gun. I mean, you're, you're talking a SIG pistol that if you really wanted to, you could take this bad boy hunting. Absolutely. I mean, the 10 millimeter is capable of taking medium-sized mm -hmm. game, no problem. And that's why, you know, Chad was saying earlier, uh, a lot of Alaskan guides are packing Glock Model 20s and mm -hmm. 40 MOSs. Uh, from Glock because they want that extra capacity, they want the firepower, they want fast follow-up shots, but with still a good bit of big bore power mm -hmm. going downrange, with proper shot placement and good projectile choice, the 10 millimeter is no slouch even mm -hmm. against bears and all kind of large, larger dangerous games. So now with that gun, cool. you are kind of getting up there in the price point though, for sure. Yeah, the, yeah. these are pricey, so. especially with this finish. I mean, it's it's definitely a much more expensive pistol than some of the other ones that we've looked at here. Well, probably one of the more affordable options is the uh, XD here. This is an XDM10. So this is a uh, full capacity, 15 shot, double stack, 10 millimeter from um, Springfield. Springfield Armory. Duh. Duh. I, I didn't even know that Springfield <laughs> made a 10 millimeter, and then here we are looking around, and sure enough, they do. What's the barrel length? Oh, 5.25 inches. Well, they conveniently let you know there on the side of the gun. But nice fiber optic sights, <clears throat> loaded chamber indicator. Uh, the rear sight is adjustable for elevation and windage. So that's a nice feature. Grip safety, yeah. just like your standard XD. Look, we, we try to be fair, okay, in these videos. Uh, we, we try not to get... In a Five Guns video, we try not to interject too many, let's just say, overly harsh personal opinions about any certain company or gun or anything like that. But, However, but, I, I can't exactly agree with some of the stuff that Springfield said mm, and done. And I, and, and I know that they've tried their best to sort of make amends. Now, to be completely fair and completely honest, I'm not, I've never been a humongous fan of how this particular gun feels. I don't know. Uh, it, it just... I don't and mind too pushing much. sights on them it sucks. Yeah, I, like uh, those sights are in there. If you ever have to push 
sights on one of these guns, you're in for a bad day. I borrowed an XD in 9mm one time for a uh, little IDPA match just locally, and the gun shot good. It felt good in my hand. I mean, it wasn't terrible. I wouldn't say they're terrible guns. A lot of people, you know, rely on them every day, but it wouldn't really be my first choice. I'm more of a Glock guy. I would prefer to have a 20 or a 40 MOS or something like that over yeah. the XD, but it is a relatively affordable option. Well, I mean, I try to have an open mind, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, with certain things, we try very hard to have an open mind. And one thing I can say about XDs that I think is cool mm -hmm. is the fit and finish on them is excellent. It is good. If you look That's at how, how nicely the feed ramp is polished on this gun and a lot of the polishing work, you can tell that they've polished certain surfaces on the inside of the slide. Um, you know, the barrel fit seems pretty decent. Let me see this thing. This thing looks nice. And, you know, Every one that we've dealt with in the past, they seem to shoot pretty decent. Okay, so we thought this would be a neat option to show off for those of you that want, you know, something that's not a Glock, but still in the same, you know, kind of capacity range a um, as a Glock. Some people just don't want to buy a Glock. I get that. You know, Glock has their, you know, share of fanboys. I get it. Um, so it, it's okay. All right, so moving on. All right, what do you think about that? All right, so... Our last gun here is a revolver. Okay, now we're, we've, we've shown off some autos here. Uh, the last gun in the lineup is going to be a five shot or six shot wheel gun from Ruger, and it is chambered in 10 millimeter. I told you you guys couldn't count. 10 millimeter automatic. So, <laughs> you know, you do have a Ruger Super Red Hawk that is chambered in that caliber, and this is pretty much a hunting pistol. You know, it's already set up for scope rings. You put a scope on it, and you've got a very well balanced 10 millimeter auto. Revolver. I imagine that the recoil impulse on that wouldn't be terrible. Nothing. Given the given the cartridge. However, mm -hmm. a big old heavy all steel revolver in 10 millimeter. I kind of have mixed feelings about that. Seems a little lackluster. I mean, it's why you know, not just buy a 44 Magnum or you know something more powerful, whatever the case is. Or if you're wanting a hunting revolver, I mean, go with something like a 460. You know, well, what, along what those if lines. what if some people can't handle that kind of recoil? Oh, I know, I know. I mean, if it's a good, powerful for, cartridge, and, it, it's, and it's a very powerful mm -hmm. cartridge in a in a reasonably heavy gun that it will be a lot gentler on the recoil. I said, I just have mixed feelings about it. And 10 millimeter is pretty common. I mean, you know, the thing is, not only is 10 millimeter as a cartridge pretty common, but you know, the prices on some of the ball ammunition in 10 millimeter has gone down quite a bit mm -hmm. too. So this is a revolver that you can get in a in a reasonably powerful cartridge and still be able to afford to shoot it a good bit. You know, you look at 357 Magnum ball has gone down in price a lot. Mm -hmm. 44 Magnum hasn't gone down in price. 44 Special still pretty reasonable, but 10 millimeter is still a lot less expensive than 44 Special. So this is a revolver that's still powerful, can still put down game, but you can still afford to take it out and shoot it a good bit. So I think that's where something like that really excels. You know, put a scope on it, get you a pair of shooting sticks, and you can go kill a deer at 50, 60, maybe even 75 yards mm -hmm. with that gun. Have um, to interject. And it can, it can handle a lot of pressure, you mm -hmm. know. It's a oh, strong yeah. action. I mean, the Red Hawks... It's got some merits. The Red Hawks, Hawks have always been known to, you know, to hold a lot of pressure and shoot some pretty hot loads. But one thing, I, I have to inject a, inject a little bit of personal opinion. I've never been a huge fan of the fit and finish of the newer Red Hawks. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the sharp edges are not deburred. You know, there's some machining marks that are present in the there's crane assembly. There's some brush marks left on yeah, it. Yeah, it's just the fit and finish of them is, is not like a Smith, you know. I've always been like a Smith guy. I just love Smith & Wesson revolvers, always like the fit and finish, especially the vintage pieces. Um, not to say that this is not a good revolver. I mean, GP100s, all those are good guns. But it's just some of the newer stuff coming out of Ruger as far as the revolvers go. Eh, could maybe be just a little bit better in the QC department. To be, fair, to be fair, we did have the Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum that had the little bit of a burr on the muzzle. Yep. Was it the Combat Magnum or it was, was it the 9mm? It was the 66. Okay, yeah, it yeah. was the 66 Combat Magnum. It was the Combat Magnum. Magnum. I mean, now, the gun shot great, mm -hmm. but it did have a minor burr uh, on the muzzle, on the crown of the muzzle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't can, know if that's just something that, you know, every now and then someone gets could, built uh, on, a, on a Friday. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I could probably get around get around that. A revolver in 10 millimeter, that does sound kind of cool now that I think about it. Just well, going I mean, into you know, the Ruger, videos, Okay, mm. for instance, Ruger still makes revolvers in 30 carbine. Yeah. So people think 30 carbine, what, what in the heck would you want that in a revolver for? But you got to think, you got a lot of old school guys that love their M1 carbine. <laughs> I'd rather and, have it in an auto mag. A, yeah, and they want a revolver <laughs> uh, chambered in 30 carbine. Uh. So, you know, Ruger still makes some oddball stuff mm. like that. I mean, 
I don't think Smith and Wesson makes a ten millimeter auto. I've never revolver. seen. I've never seen one. Uh, not in a Smith, but yeah. Uh, speaking of another ten millimeter, you know these videos we always have a wild card. So right. if you guys don't know it, Ray and Eric built a ten millimeter high point carbine. Yeah, we we took a, a forty Smith and Wesson and we uh, <coughs> <coughs> made some changes. Okay, well, it looks like High Point has <laughs> I borrowed idea. Borrowed the idea because now High Point makes a ten millimeter carbine. This is a factory <laughs> High Point ten millimeter carbine. As far as I know, I don't think they're doing ten millimeter pistols yet. Yeah, those are a little scary. <laughs> those are yeah, oh oh yeah. We 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 did we, we took a nine by twenty five Dylan chamber reamer and we opened we took a ten millimeter chamber reamer and opened one up and the pistols are a handful to hold on to. They do they do work and they're reasonably accurate, but this is a factory ten millimeter high point carbine. And look, it's threaded. Yep. That's ready right to go, ready, ready right for there. your muzzle devices of uh, your choosing. And look, this is this is a reasonably inexpensive option, That's a fun. way that you can get into 10 millimeter without spending a lot of money. And look, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this, if you're hunting 50, 60 yards in a food plot or something like that, or just making short range shots on deer in, inside of 50 yards, and you just want a, a good little 10 millimeter, you want a pistol caliber carbine with a good bit of power, that's not gonna break the bank, Something like this would be a good option. It's not expensive. If you if it falls out of the out of the Polaris and gets ran over uh, and, and crushed, you know you're not out a whole ton of money. Or if your brother-in-law uh, borrows, <laughs> borrows it and it. drops it out of a deer stand and breaks it in half or something, you're not out a ton of money. It's a borderline disposable hunting rifle or personal protection rifle and a reasonably powerful cartridge. You know what's funny is there there's a chassis system on the market. I don't know if it fits like the 1095, but I know it fits the 9mm you know, high point carbines, but it gives it sort of the Beretta, what's that? Um, storm. The Storm, yeah, yeah. the CX-4 Storm kind of look and it makes it really ergonomic, but one of the things about the the 10mm that Eric and Ray made, form, formed, I don't it, know. Uh, yeah. it, it's a little freaky to shoot because it's kind of boring. You you <laughs> you've got your face on the stock right here, and you feel like the spring is about to come out and eat your cheek. Uh, it's just every recoil cycle. I, I had to make this Rube Goldberg <laughs> like double spring <laughs> system in order to slow that bolt down enough where the gun wouldn't I don't know explode an aid or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, you know, oh, and I boy. still I still have the original 10 millimeter high go. point <laughs> that we made, and I, ha I still have the the original 10 millimeter pistol. And look, man, you know, it's a powerful cartridge. It's got some good <laughs> velocity. You get you get more velocity because of the longer barrel. Uh, it's threaded. What's not to like? I think it's cool. It's inexpensive. Yep. It's powerful. Uh, you know, that might be a great option for somebody who doesn't want to spend a ton of money on a hunting rifle. Maybe we can borrow it and do a video. We'll see. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> um, so, guys, there's been our uh, our top tens. Top tens. Top uh, five You see what I did there? A little, little pun there. Yeah. If, if, I, if I can impart a little bit of a, a horrible, horrible joke. So our top tens. You're full of them. Okay. So we had some handguns in there, revolver, and we threw a wild card at you with the rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, we're just trying to have a little fun, show off some cool stuff. 10 millimeter is a cartridge that I've always been very intrigued with. I do like it. Uh, I think that it fills a considerable void. Um, that is definitely there for some people. Uh, it has its uh, legion of followers mm -hmm. that really like it. And I have to say, I'm, I'm finding myself more and more really digging 10 millimeter. And uh, I had a Glock Model 20 and a, a good friend of mine had to have it really bad. So he ended up commandeering that from me. But I mean. think I may have to pick up another 20 and uh, maybe get like the endo uh, brace adapter yeah. and come up with some kind of cool little, I don't know. I wanna say it wasn't me because I'm not a good friend. That's true. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate all of you. Uh, many more videos on the way. Make sure you tune in. Uh, we're trying to put as much content out for you guys. We hope you enjoy it. I uh, want to give a special thanks to all of our supporters. Guys, if you purchase man cans to support the channel, if you support us on Patreon, if you purchase t-shirts, thank you very much for supporting our channel. Gives us the ability to do what we do. You guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being a viewer and supporting our channel by watching our videos. Uh, share this video with your buddies. Have yourselves a great day. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.